Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Church in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Asante. Glad that we're together to pray this week, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Let's do that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let's better prepare for Mass by taking a moment to confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you, our Lord, are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Let us pray that we may recognize the presence of Christ in our daily lives. Father, help us to keep in mind that Jesus Christ, our Savior, lives with you now in glory, and he promised to remain with us until the end of time. And we ask all these blessings through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge, of whom should I be afraid? 
I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call, have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or an intriguer. But who was ever made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Hallelujah. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that you should know that they should know you, the only true God and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, welcome and thank you so much for being with us on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, you know that we, during the month of May, always honor Mary. I'm wearing a vestment dedicated to Our Lady that was given to me this week by Nancy and Kathy. I'm grateful to them for that. And they gave it in honor of my mom. I want to talk about the readings first and then we'll share some personal stuff. First of all, this first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Try to imagine, if you can, since we're focusing so much on Mary in this month of May, that she has given up her son to his public ministry and seen this innocent son of hers, whom she loved with all her heart, 
uh, suffer terribly and die on the cross. When the, the strong and wonderful apostles are all missing except for John, she's there at the foot of the cross. So she goes through this terribly painful experience and then sees the church slowly rise again. But really, you would think that the work of the church would be those of her, uh, her son's apostles and disciples. So what I love about this reading from the Acts of the Apostles is when they come back, Jesus has ascended to heaven, and the apostles are going to start laying the foundation for the future of Jesus' ministry in the world through them. I love that it tells us that in the room, when they got back together to pray and to plan, was Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I'm thinking to myself, she had every reason to take retirement. She had every reason in the world to say, I've done my part, I gave you my son, he gave you his life, and I, I gave him to you to, to do the work he did. She'd have every reason to say, enough, I've done what I could. But Mary, in the midst of this loss and this pain and this sorrow and the amazing resurrection and the amazing ascension, she wants to go back and hang out with the early church to see that the work of her son continues. I, there are so many reasons to love Mary, but I love a mom who can say, you know, I'm going to continue the work of my son by the way I live my life. And even though I have every reason to step back and let others take responsibility, I'm not going to do that. And that's especially important, right, isn't it, in the week in which we remember the ascension of our Lord? Because that's what he does at the ascension. He says, I've taught you, I've shown you, I've lived for you, now I give it to you. And Mary accepted that invitation and continued to do the work of her son and the work of her church, what a beautiful, beautiful testimony to the faithfulness of Mary, not just from the moment of conception till the moment of Jesus' natural death, but well beyond in being the mother of our church. Okay, let's go to that second reading, the Acts of the Apostles, no, pardon me, the letter of St. Peter. I love this line. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Some years ago, I had the opportunity to participate in a demonstration in Manhattan, which is never going to be a good place for Catholics or pro-lifers, and walk behind Cardinal John O'Connor. And all he was doing was praying the rosary as he walked down a city street and took a lot of us with him to an abortion clinic where they were doing a late-term abortion. I mention that because you wouldn't believe what he faced, uh, people spitting at him in the street. Uh, people throwing condoms at him, people cursing him with language you, you just wouldn't imagine. And I kept watching him to see how he would respond, and there was a calm and a serenity to Cardinal O'Connor that I then saw again uh, some time later on Long Island here when Bishop John McGann, our former bishop, now with God, he did the same thing. He was the first diocesan bishop, though, to ever march in front of an abortion clinic and I mention that to you because he, too, faced all sorts of crowds, but he had a serenity to him, a, a peacefulness, just like Cardinal O'Connor. Now, they were being called everything under the sun. They were being treated in an abusive way by some of the counter demonstrators, but it didn't seem to get to them. And I think the reason for that is found in this particular passage. If you are faithful to Jesus, am I faithful to Jesus and his values? If we do what he wants us to do, we're going to get abused, we're going to get rejected, we're going to be vilified by some elements in our society, and some pretty powerfully. But I think that what John McGann and John O'Connor knew was that this is the call of any Christian, not to worry about what people think of us in this world, but to hope and pray that when we go to the next world, we'll have a God who says, well done, good and faithful servant. I remember that Bishop McGann would often say, you know, you can't get past that line in Scripture where it says, woe to anyone who hurts the little ones. And our job is to defend the little ones. And so he did, both he and Cardinal O'Connor being a witness to the sanctity of all human life, womb to tomb, and not being afraid to say that to a world that does not want to hear it. Because why? Because I think of this passage. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you. So John O'Connor, John McGann, Blessed are you and blessed are any of us who have the guts, the courage, the stamina, the backbone to say, I belong to Christ and I will do and say and reflect in my life what he would expect me to. And finally, let's go to this gospel, this gospel of St. John. Um, leaving God's work behind is what this gospel is about. Jesus is saying, Father, I'm, I'm leaving this world now, but I've planted good seed. You know, I've, I've done what I'm supposed to do. 
and I can go now not worrying because I know the church will continue forever because it's founded on you and me, the Father, the Son, and I'm sending the Holy Spirit to continue the work. So this is Jesus saying, Father, I did my job. I'm ready to come home. You sent me into the world, and I did it. But there's more than that. I think this is also the Lord's way of saying, just as I tell my father, the job's done, I've passed it on, the seed is planted, I think it's then an invitation, maybe more than that, a command to you and me. We've been given the legacy of being Christ in the world. The reason he can leave is he says, he knows I'm leaving good people behind. Those good people are you and me who are called on to do his work, to be his instrument in the world, to be his presence in the world. You know, I think all of you who are parents and grandparents, you come to a point where you've planted the seed, you've taught your kids what you can, you've lived, hopefully, a witness to them, and then sooner or later you got to trust that the goodness you planted will bear abundant fruit. You can't tell them for the rest of their life what to do, how to do it, but you know you did what you could, and you trust that they'll do the right thing because of the good seed you planted. That's what Jesus is saying. Father, we planted in the people behind us good seed. The church will flourish. It will go on forever. Why? Because of the legacy we left for them. And, and I mention that in the context, too. Um, you and I have shared so much personal time together, and I've delighted or, or burdened you with too many stories about my sainted mother, who I have had the privilege of having in my life to the age of 102. But this week, she went home to God. And I, I of course, you know, love pictures. So I'm going to share one now. Um, she's now, I believe, in the kingdom of heaven with this man she loved so much. I just found, you know, when someone you love passes away, you go through their things. And I, I found stuff that she had saved. And my father liked to sketch. And he had a sketch of two beautiful people. That was them, he said, on their wedding day, 1947. But then at the end of the century, for, I guess, their uh, 50th anniversary, he said, you know, Cecilia, we may have changed a lot, but my love for you never changes, only gets deeper. How good is it that they can be reunited now? And the other thing he wrote in another note, which I, I love and my sisters and I have taken strength from, uh, he said, we're now old, Cecilia, but, but don't worry, uh, because even at this age, our lives together will continue in the life to come. They were really people of faith, and if we have faith in our family, and I hope we do, it all comes from them. Faith in Jesus Christ, faith in, in our faith, the Catholic faith, faith in the meaning of family life, faith in loving unconditionally. So I'm just so grateful to so many of you who have listened to me over the time since the pandemic began and so many homilies. I have peppered you with stories of my mom and how grateful I am to have her and will always be treasuring her memory. But I'm also happy for her. Uh, the race is over. She has run the good race and is now one with her God, whom she loved, with Mother Mary, who she prayed to every day of her life, and with my dad, who was uh, her true and wonderful companion in the journey of life. I'm going to miss them both so much, but so happy. What I'd ask you for is a prayer, and this is my prayer. I have to, on Monday, do the funeral. And, you know, she's my heart, and I'm afraid of not getting through it okay. So just pray that I have the strength and the grace to do right by her, by not being a mush and losing it, but by trying to be strong in telling the story of our faith, the story of what we believe about resurrection, the story of one Catholic Christian woman's life named Cecilia McNeil Lasanti, who lived it faithfully and well. Now, I have burdened you at different times with songs, and I'm going to try to get through one more song. When my mother and father were engaged but not yet married, he went off for four years to fight in World War II, and they had just the the gift of letters back and forth. But around the time when they were separated, like so many people who were fighting in that incredible war, it was a woman named uh, Vera Lynn. She just went home to God recently, 103 years old, but she wrote a song and made it popular by singing it, much better than I'm going to sing it. But to me, she was not only singing to the guys and gals who were going off to war, but I think it's a perfect song for when people we love we hope and pray are going to heaven, and it's called We'll Meet Again. So if you know it, wherever you are watching this Mass, you can sing it along with me. You'd have to be of a certain age to know it, but try your best. But this is what Vera Lynn wrote. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away so will you please say hello to the folks that i know tell them i won't be long 
they'll be happy to know that as I saw you go, I was singing this song. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Mom, Cecilia, the best in the whole world, rest in peace, and thank you for everything. As a people of our Catholic faith, we have a creed that we profess. Let's do that together now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence that the promises of Christ are real, we know we can trust them with the things that burden us, let's now have our prayer of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been entrusted with the word of the Lord may proclaim it without hesitation or fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Christ's disciples who live in a culture of death, we may be effective witnesses to the gospel of life, which has been entrusted to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer for being a Christian, that they may carry the cross with joy and experience the consolation of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially baby Mia Skatz, Stephen Seidem, Nick Amar, Lawrence DeMeo, Harold Gill, Brendan Lynch, Janet Chavel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Cecilia Lasante, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Susan and Peter Ennis, Scott A. Schneider, the Mother's Day Novena, Lucy and Sam Castiglia, Andrea Mormino, Danny and Tina LaPera, Jimmy Saldo, 8th Anniversary, Joe Amarin, Frank and Sophie Juzwiak, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And if I can, let me add some intentions for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. I'm asked to pray for Annette Romance, uh, for Baby Oakley, for Justin Doherty, Mary and Pat Sears, Rosalie Salco, Dario Rivera, Carol Pablo Eshandi, uh, all the members of the Paratine family. I pray for Angelo and Al Clemente, for Leanne Lasanti, for Katie O'Connor, for my mom Cecilia, for Judy Alaka. I want to pray as well for Frank Matassa, who is uh, Judy's son-in-law. I pray for all prisoners of conscience, especially remembering Jimmy Lay on trial in Hong Kong, for standing with freedom. Pray for Larry Lewis and Millie Paradiso, for Patricia Stewart, Ursula Bobas, Connie Ivanis, for Maria Cariola. I pray too for all the members of the McShay family. Let me pray too for Judge Tony Falanga. I pray as well for Joanne Cavaccini, Tim Moore, Kimberly Cusack, and Christine Bauman. For Michael Chanover, for Jeanette Chanover Davidson, for Carol Silva, for Nelwyn Randisi, for Joe Falgiano, for Kathy Bordingo and Nancy Doherty, for Tom Miller, and for Ginny Rivera. Let me pray too for Courtney Genovese, for Jose E. Senna, for Jimmy Collins, and for my good friend Tom Sedita. Pray as well for Teresa Leo Fisher, for Larry Mayer, for Joseph Graffeo, for Vilio Bronzini. I pray too for Andy Stefano, and for Courtney Desjardins, for Tommy Swengross, for Mary and Ken Johnson and their families, for Patrick Cuccius and Elizabeth Carter. Among those who are sick, I pray for Martin Soval, for Stacy Meech, for Sam and Beverly Maggio. I pray for uh, uh, Russell Castro Giovanni, 
Pray for retired Major Resty Malari. Pray for Michelle Spinelli, for Brian and Kathy Rogers, for Karen Guadagno, Thomas Crescenti Crescenzo. I pray for Valeria Marchenkis, as well as Marie Salimitro. Pray for Susie and Vinnie Mignardi, as well as Margaret Ann Steiser. Let me pray for Rose Madonna, as well as for uh, uh, Glenn Mankin. I pray once again for Frank Matassa. Uh, I want to pray for Kathy, who's the sister of our good friend Helen at the office at Our Lady of Lourdes. Pray for Regina Brighton. Pray for my friend Bob, Father Bob Le Lebrano. This week, Bob celebrated 38 years of priesthood. Bob is one of those guys who admits freely that he has struggled for years with addiction, and he has put up a brave, brave fight against it with the help of God. So I'm so delighted that Bob is celebrating 38 years of priesthood and being a witness to all of us to keep on keeping on to face all of those, uh, those addictions that are out there. I pray too for uh, Rose Marie, my friend who's going through some health frightening things right now. Uh, and I wanna pray too for those who have died. And among those who've been asking me to pray for them, for the people that are dear for them, I wanna pray for Paul Lowell, for uh, Robert J. McCarthy, for Joan Kretz. Pray as always for my dad, Nicholas, for Rosalie Sanko, Sophia Maglione, Phyllis Petrowski, Kenneth and Marie Taylor, for Nicholas Marini, Pat Sistar, Jean-Claude Linnae, uh, for Paul Romeo, as well as Ed Reeds, Judy Fomono, Mary and John Coyne, Doug Julick, Chris and Marion O'Brien. I pray for Dennis Francis Conroy, Con pardon me, Cooney, as well as Stanley Krupski. Let me pray for Corinne Caracciolo. I'll be doing a mass to celebrate her this weekend, massive memorial. For Dominic Macchio, for Luigi Antoni Rosmini and Gemma Stumper Rosmini, and Mike Goff, Steve O'Mara, John Slee, Kristen Sedita Duggan, Tom O'Sullivan, Bessie and T.C. Senna. I pray for all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, for Bartolomeo Beni, for Guy, Gaetano, Salvatore, Angelo, and all the Emelo family who have passed. I pray for Anna and Gary Gomes, for Albert Cavelli, Paul Struzieri, Emilio Olaka, for Helen, Luke, and John Marr, for Pat and George Leighton, Ursula Jack and Paul Cronin, Kay and Mike Lynch, for Doris and Hank Erickson. Let me pray for Jack Carroll and his son-in-law, Dave Robin, for Christina Formato, um, Christina's birthday would be this weekend. God bless her. I want to pray for uh, Billy and Michael Sarasoli. I want to pray too for their dad who is going through some serious health issues. For Mary and Joseph William, for Kathy Orofino, Margaret O'Connell Asante, Kenny Bolando, John, Maureen, uh, Ed, Anne, and Peter and Mary Raber. Pray for Ray and Monica Kerrison, for Richard Rosmarin and Jimmy Soldo. For uh, Carmela Labolita, Cynthia Prague, Elaine Tiso, Matthew Toriello, Joseph Sardone, and Bessie Sena. For Bill Kelly, Isabella Glauda, Irene and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz, Father Don Babinski, Father Ken Marks, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Winkler, Father Dennis Wheatley. I pray for Marie Sicolo, Gerard Granito, Maria and Albert Covelli, Peggy DeMarco and Richard DeMarco. Corinne Locke, for Melissa Bergman, for Joseph Pavone and Nick Martone and John Bonifacio, for Jerry Monk, Gene and Nicholas Delario, Kyle and Tommy Ryan, Nancy Palumbo, Catherine Cheney, John Slade, Helen Kiddash, uh, for Richard Maglione and for Al Menendez. I pray for William Anthony Bushweiler, as well as Teresa DiPalmo and uh, Annette Cilantro and Charles McLaughlin, Dean Hersick, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Mary and Donato Forlenza, Nicole Toussaint, I pray for Nona Scaglione and Emily Lafaso, for Melissa Bergman, Richard Clementi, my dear friend, Ray Anzalone. I pray for Brian Hussey, Susan Scanio, and Susan Mulligan. I pray for all the people you and I love, and especially I'm praying for all those moms who've gone ahead to uh, heaven on our behalf and who are so responsible for who we become. Uh, so many of the moms in our lives, grandmoms in our lives, who we hope are happy in heaven. I want to pray as always for our first responders, police, firefighters, EMTs. I want to pray for doctors and nurses and orderlies. I want to pray too for all of our men and women in the armed forces and for their safety. And let me finish by just adding one or two more. I want to uh, pray for Jimmy and uh, Donna Kesselman. Uh, she's our director of religious ed and she and Jimmy are celebrating 40 years of marriage. I had the privilege 40 years ago of celebrating their wedding, so we wish them and their families lots of blessings. And uh, 
I also, of course, want to ask you to pray with thanksgiving. Uh, Jim mentioned before baby Mia Scats is one of the young children we've been praying for, just a newborn who's been waiting for and this week received a new heart. So we pray for her continued recovery and health. And of course, I ask you to pray for me and my family and pray for my mom, Cecilia, uh, in a spirit of thanksgiving. And join me finally in, in joining all our petitions into one and giving praise to the mother of God, who's our mother too, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, accept the prayers and the gifts we offer in faith and in love. And may this Holy Eucharist bring us to your eternal glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever during this holy season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. In him a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin has ended. A broken world has been renewed and we are once more made whole. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us, so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you, and send forth the power of your Spirit, so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet, before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth, in a sign of your everlasting love and covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so, while there at supper, Jesus took bread, he blessed the bread and broke it, he gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. We do all of this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to bring us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those you have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one family and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence in the company of the saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company too of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, those people we love and lost, we pause to remember them now and commend them to God's tender mercy. Then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 One of the beautiful things that uh, my family and I can celebrate, and I certainly treasure, is when it comes to my mom, Cecilia, to have no regrets because you love when you should. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, let's pray for that that we won't leave anything unresolved in our lives, but do the loving we should, the forgiving we should, the caring we should, now while we have the time, for the ability to say, I live my life with no regrets because I live, Lord, in you and in love. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. From your homes, please join me in praying the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Not too many announcements, but uh, I always like to invite you to join me because personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti goes on even in times of sadness. So this week the guest has been Dr. Bill Baker and Dr. Bill Baker was the president of PBS and just a wonderful Catholic Christian man talking about his faith and journey. And the next week, you know, when you're an older priest, it, it, it's a source of great hope and encouragement when you run into somebody young in our business who's uh, gives you the promise of good things to come. So I interviewed a Marianist who teaches at Kellenberg Memorial High School. His name is Brother Patrick Cahill, young man who has chosen a religious life and uh, just interviewing him was a joy. He's filled with the Spirit of God, filled with hope for the future, loves the church, loves God, wants to share it with especially the young people he's entrusted to teach. So it's a great interview with Brother Patrick Cahill next week. So Dr. Bill Baker this week, Brother Patrick Cahill next week, and as always, you can find it either on Sirius XM, and if you say, well, I don't have Sirius XM, the Catholic channel, then don't worry about it. You just go on your computer and punch in, personally speaking, with Monsignor Jim Losanti, and, uh, and you'll hear these wonderful people talking about the great gift of faith. And as I said before, please pray for me and my family and for Mom Cecilia. Uh, this Mass is, of course, Sunday's Mass. Tomorrow I'll have her funeral, and I want to feel your prayers giving me support and help, so thank you for that. Let's pray. God, our loving Savior, hear us. And through this holy mystery, this Mass, give us hope that the glory you've given to the risen Christ will be given to all of us who are your church, his body, for he truly is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let your love in us and